Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today, we're planting a tree. Come with me and let's talk about it and get this job done. If you followed my channel for any length of time, you may know that over here on the north side of our house, I have this shade garden. It's mostly shade. Uh, it gets dappled sunlight in the summer. And I've been struggling with how to go about uh, gardening in this space. Um, and uh, I've tried a few different things. And what I've decided is that this area is lacking a focal point. So I decided that uh, we needed some vertical structure in this garden. We've got really tall trees that are 60, 70, 80 feet tall here, but all we can see at ground level is the big trunks. We don't really have any eye level interest in this garden. So uh, I was talking with our next door neighbor about two weeks ago, and they're getting ready to do some landscaping in their gardens this summer as well, or maybe next summer. You know, they don't have their plans nailed down yet as far as I know. But we were talking about flowering spring trees, and they and we love flowering spring trees. We have a Cherokee Princess white flowering dogwood down in the bottom of our garden. We also have a red bud tree in the bottom of our garden. And that's the only really ornamental flowering uh, trees that we have for the springtime. So I was talking with my neighbor about how I wanted to get a pink flowering dogwood, maybe another redwood, maybe some service berries, maybe some other spring flowering trees. And he was saying that, yeah, he really wants some as well. We're both trying to go more toward natives as well so that we can be more ecologically in tune with our local area. And so we agreed that putting a dogwood in between our houses on this side of our garden would be a really good idea for both of us. We'll be able to have a focal point for the garden. They'll be able to see the tree and see the flowers from their sunroom uh, when the flowers are happening in the spring. And it's a win-win for everybody. And so um, I did get uh, our neighbor's agreement on this plan, so we don't have to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant this dogwood tree in this side yard. This is a Cherokee Brave Cornus, Florida native dogwood tree. It blooms pink in the spring and in the fall it has bright red leaves and then when the leaves are gone, if there are any left, there are red berries on it for the birds to enjoy. Also, when it first comes out in the spring, the leaves have a reddish tone to them and then they turn full green. So this tree will have a lot of color interest for us. It grows at maturity to be about 30 feet tall. Sometimes it gets up to 15 to 30 feet tall, depending on its location. And it can grow to spread at, um, at a rate of like 35 feet wide. However, that's when it's in its optimal location with more sunlight. This is going to be in dappled sun at the most. It will get wintertime sun, but in the summer, it'll be dappled sun, almost all shade. And it also is going to have some root competition from the mature trees that are here, not to mention the garden that we already have here. So in this sheltered location with less sunlight, with competition for water, I think that this tree is not going to reach 30 feet tall and 35 feet wide. I think we're looking more like 15 or 20 feet tall, 15 or 20 feet wide. Also, we can certainly prune it to keep it in a size and shape that we want. So I'm not concerned that this space is too tight for this small flowering tree. I think it's going to be absolutely perfect. Cornus Florida are native to the east coast of the United States. This is a selection of a native plant. Um, and so I'm really happy to have another native in the garden. It wants to be in acidic soil that's well-drained. We do have clay soil here. It is about neutral, it's not really acidic, it's not really alkaline. And so I'm hoping that this will be soil that this tree will enjoy. Dogwoods can also be subject to some diseases. Um, dogwood anthracnose, I think, is a pretty common disease in some parts of the country right now. I'm hoping to not have to worry about that. It may turn out that it gets powdery mildew or some other disease issue, so I may end up having to spray it. It might require a little bit of care to keep it disease-free, but if I can keep the roots happy, which means in soil that it likes, and keep the roots cooler by mulching it appropriately, then I think the tree hopefully won't find it to be in a stressful situation and will be less subject to disease or pests. 
what else should I say about this? I think, I think I'm just going to go ahead and get planting. Now, as far as where I'm going to place it, I want to kind of go back toward the fence about two thirds of the way uh, between the edge of the path and the fence. So I don't know, about 10 feet back. This is 15 feet wide here, about five feet from the fence. I think I'm going to aim for about where that container is that currently is holding a hosta right here. This guy he has got to move, but let me get the drip off of him first. Oh, he's rooted into the soil. I'm just going to sacrifice this daffodil foliage. I'd rather have the tree. Now, I think this location right here will be just fine. Perfect, in fact. All right, now I'm gonna, before I dig my hole, I'm gonna stand back and look at it from different angles. Hmm, I think I wanna move it. That's not where I want it. Maybe that's better. All right, so I like this location a lot better. I don't know, there's something about where the canopy hits compared to when I sit in my chair, when I walk around the different garden spaces, I think where it was was too close to this other tree. This will give it room to spread its branches out. It's kind of equidistant from that tree and that tree. Um, eventually, maybe the branches of this tree will reach and wrap around those other two tree trunks. But for now, I think this will be a nice space to have a mass of leaves in the garden canopy. Now, of course, it's going to be about two feet shorter than it is right now once I get it out of the can and into the ground. But I think this is going to be a good spot for it. So now on the ground down near it, I already have some things here. Uh, I've got a stand of a stilby right here that I really love and I want to keep there. So I'm going to do my best to not disturb the stilby too much and just let it stay there. I have some tulip foliage here that I'm going to cut back and just, if the tulips don't survive, oh well. This is a new hosta that I put in last year. I believe this is an Empress Wu hosta and um, it will eventually get really big, but for now it's kind of a medium size. I'm gonna see if I can dig this hole without disturbing that hosta either. Back here, I've got some heavenly bamboo or uh, Nandina domestica. This is an invasive species in Maryland. I knew this when I planted them, uh, but I wasn't yet a believer about the problem that they offer in the Maryland woodlands and forests and so forth. So now that I've been through my master gardener training, um, I've learned a lot more about invasive species in Maryland and the damage that they do to our ecology and to our landscapes and our forests and so forth. And I no longer want to have these plants in my garden. So they are healthy. They're doing just fine. There's nothing wrong with the health of the plant other than they are an invasive species and I don't want that in here anymore. So I'm going to be taking those out and composting them. I'm not going to give them away to anybody else either because I don't want them in the environment. So these are going to be coming out. However, <laughs> that is not going to be happening today because uh, number one, I don't have anything to replace them with yet and I don't want the hole in the garden. And number two, I um, don't have time to do that project. So for today, they're staying, but eventually they're coming out. So with that in mind, I'm going to dig my hole. I'm gonna dig it to the same depth of the current root ball. I'm gonna to try to make it a bit wider, maybe twice as wide as the container, but I'm limited by the astilbe and the hosta. And I'm going to um, plant the root ball into the hole. I'm not going to be adding any soil amendments at all, other than some fertilizer. I'll be using Biotone Starter Fertilizer, which has great mycorrhizae fungi in there that help with root development and root growth. And so I'll be doing that. It also offers gentle fertilization for the plant itself. Um, and so uh, that is just my common planting method. Uh, when I get it in the hole, I'll make sure that it's vertical. And other than that, that's kind of what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna see if I can pull the root ball out of the container and set it aside so that I can use the container to hold my extra soil. So that's my plan. Let's see how that goes. Well, I didn't have any trouble getting the bucket 
off of the root ball. So I just started digging the hole and I realized that watching someone dig a hole with a shovel is not the most exciting video ever. So I cut some of that out. I put the biotone into the hole, I put the plant in and made sure it was vertical and then started to backfill. Super easy. Yeah. <laughs> the dogs ran into the tripod. Uh, so, you know, the rest of the job is not on camera. So I'm just gonna speed up through here. I was just checking it, make sure it was vertical and clean up my mess. All right, friends. Well, the tree is in. I'm very, very happy with the placement of this tree. I am so looking forward to having a flowering tree here in the coming years. I think it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I'm really pleased with the way it went in, the way it fits into the space. And uh, yeah, so that is a project that I'm super happy about doing this spring. I have been doing some other planting today, so I'm going to just put in some footage here of some other things that I've stuck into the ground. You may not even know I had these plants because I think I bought them after my last plant stash overview. So here's a look at some of the other things I've been planting lately. I'm going to water this tree in really well today. The soil was very moist already because we've had about five days of rain. Uh, so I'm going to just make sure that it stays moist. I don't want the roots to rot, but I don't want them to dry out either, especially in its first year. When you're planting a new tree, the general guideline is if it's one inch diameter, keep it moist uh, its first year. If it's two inch diameter, keep it extra moist for the first two years you have it. If it's three inch diameter, the first three years and so forth. So uh, this is less than an inch diameter. So, but I'm just gonna make sure that all of this growing season and through the winter, by the way, I'm gonna make sure that it stays evenly moist without being too wet. Um, I don't think I need to fertilize this anymore. All I'm going to do is continue to top dress with compost and mulch over the course of its life. And I think that will be totally fine. I don't think I need to worry about fertilizing it in particular. Now, this particular one has already bloomed for this season and I don't see any areas where it might have berries on it. So probably no berries this year, but um, next spring, I'm hoping that it will bloom gorgeously and then it'll just be a wonderful addition to the garden all along. So that's my project for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed what you saw and I hope that you're having a great time in your garden. No matter what the season is, I hope there's something in the garden that you can do to satisfy your creativity and your desire to nurture your home. 
So thank you for joining me and I will see you again in another video real soon, friends. Take care. Bye-bye.